You may remember Aaliyah said this was all about what she was going through. And her father told her, be careful who you choose to love. Well, the Democrats still trying to be careful, thinking about whether they've put too much love or faith in the Mueller investigation. Welcome to this week's Wacky Moments of Liberal Expression. You know, did anybody see any media meltdowns over the Mueller report this week? You know, any attempts by liberal shills to try to chant a whole new mantra? Mueller specifically says, well, this report does not conclude that the president committed a crime. It also does, does not, not exonerate, exonerate him. him. Just in case you weren't aware, uh, the media is not to blame for all that coverage of Russian collusion over the last two years. We all know whose fault that really is. President Trump. But the press is just following a trail that Trump created. He has proven time and time again that he cannot be trusted. Look, there's more meltdowns this week than there is deleted Clinton emails. But after their sad faces, they had to refocus their efforts to keep the Russian inclusion narrative going on the liberal media. So this is where things got really interesting. A great example, MSNBC's Ari Melber explaining how A.G. Barr's four page summary of the Mueller report is not enough and how it relates to a song by Aaliyah and how Democrats are a lot like Aaliyah because they don't know if their faith in love in Mueller was well placed. Four page letter isn't going to cut it for Congress to make an informed judgment about what the president did. And so we're seeing lawmakers and Gerald Nadler here pushing, pushing on this tonight. And it makes you think of something that the R&B star Aaliyah once sang about. You may recall her song about a four page letter that she wrote to get out her feelings. She needed the letter to express herself, four pages only. But this is a lot bigger than just someone's feelings, even someone as important as the Attorney General. This is ultimately about facts. Congress will need more than the four pages, at least that's what we're hearing from some of the Democratic leaders. You may remember Aaliyah said this was all about what she was going through, and her father told her, be careful who you choose to love. Well, the Democrats still trying to be careful thinking about whether they've put too much love or faith in the Mueller investigation. <laughs> all right, that may be the best clip I've seen all year. CNN also dug out their tinfoil hats to keep going on a collusion in conspiracy. Collusion is a behavior, and there could be ample proof of that kind of behavior in Mueller's full findings. Manafort giving the poll data, Stone's efforts to get stolen emails for advantage, the Trump Tower meeting, and more. All could be folded into the counterintelligence investigation that the AG didn't even mention in his summary. Is the question of whether the president or anyone around him was compromised by Russia uh, is a question that was not, uh, that we still are working on. Was that even part of Mueller's investigation, answering that question? CNN even going as far as trying to breathe new life into the debunked Steele dossier and all of its fake Trump golden shower allegations. I go back to what so far has not been addressed, the Steele dossier, and it's been poo-pooed and mocked, but that is the way the Russians do business. Given Trump's behavioral profile, he was a perfect target, and you know, if you want various explanations, hey, the Steele dossier is one viable one. MSNBC's Chris Matthews poses this liberal media question. He wants to know why Team Trump is lying about the Mueller report if they're lying. Because if they're going to be completely shattered by the results of the Mueller report when it does come out, why are they lying now if they're lying? No, Chris, What's the plan I think here? I think you're 100% right. 100%, huh? I mean, that doesn't seem like a loaded question. But it is a question that the liberal media would love to spend more time asking because, you know, people charged with actual crimes this week tended to be some of their favorite anti-Trump guests, like Michael Avenatti and even CNN legal analyst Mark Garagos is involved as an Avenatti co-conspirator now and witness the speed at which CNN delivers that coverage. Got an update for you on the breaking news we brought you at the top of the show. CNN has learned that attorney Mark Garagos is the unnamed co-conspirator in the criminal complaint against Michael Avenatti. Uh, that case filed in New York today, just this morning. New York prosecutors announced that they have charged Michael Avenatti, who represented adult film star Stormy Daniels in the hush money scandal involving uh, President Trump, that he has now been charged. He, Michael Avenatti, has been charged. Um, 
in this $20 million scheme to extort Nike. Garagos, who is a former CNN contributor, has not been charged with a crime. The Los Angeles-based attorney has represented a number of high-profile clients, including actor uh, Jesse Smollett. Most recently, uh, Garagos did not immediately respond to CNN's request for comment. Whoa, that went by so fast. I mean, who did Garagos represent? Who was that? Oh, Jesse Smollett. Yeah, that's... That's another issue that's going well. I mean, nobody has any questions about the sudden drop of charges against an actor who claimed that white MAGA supporters assaulted him, even though Smollett's lawyers are now claiming that those could have actually been black Nigerian men in whiteface because of the long history of black Nigerian men in whiteface that are violent Trump supporters. But the drop of charges indicates, as CNN points out, that Smollett, unlike Trump, is exonerated now. He's a victim. Innocent until proven guilty. There's been a rush to judgment about this case in multiple directions, but I do think we will see Smollett get back to work uh, because the, the narrative has once again changed from victim uh, you know, to villain, back to victim. It's been very confusing. That is all the time we have this week. I'm Eric Schneider for MRC-TV. I'll be back with more liberal media wackiness next week.